So in most of these top 10 lists, I feel like Francesca and I are on the same page. Except if the page is actually being done with the list by the time we were started. We're not often on that same page, but usually we think about the list in the same way. And I think that this week it might be an exception. We're gonna be talking about hobbies that we don't understand or perhaps are openly hostile to. And I know what mine are themed around Francesca. Mm. I feel like yours are gonna be nerd bashing. If I had no, that. no, no. I just yes. said that. You know what? Ever since um, meeting and you and having more nerds that I've called friends or whatever, um, I feel like I've like just I have more of a soft spot for your okay. kind and your your plight. Thank um, you. Just not your being husband able to, like, is a nerd, so right? No, no, not really, not really. No. I mean, he's a he's a nerd for like some things, but he doesn't play like tabletop games or like you not know a Warhammer nerd fantasy stuff. That's like okay. video games, yeah. What does he think about hobbits? Ah, uh, <laughs> he actually really does like hobbits. So yeah, no, he's a nerd. No, I look. Does I he think, know what house he would be in Hogwarts? No, he doesn't. I, he's not okay. a he's not a Harry Potter nerd. How okay. about you? Uh, obviously I'm a nerd. Um, no, this is mostly me bashing the rich rather than bashing nerds. Um, as I told you, I went to a orchestral performance of video game music at the Hollywood Bowl uh, yesterday. So I can't bash nerds for a little bit. It would be a bad But look. you are gonna bash uh, the orchestra, rich people. Maybe. Take that, Z. You love Music with fancy instruments. No, that's Ooh. not on my list. But um, but a lot of other stuff is. So uh, why don't we get into it? Starting with your number five. I think this may trigger you in a different way because I feel like uh -oh. maybe your brodom will be attacked by all the things that I have to critique. But um, number five, ATVs, all terrain vehicle <laughs> driving. This is a dumb hobby. It is also a hobby that is loud and I put it into jet ski category, but let's reserve ATVs. Beautiful terrain, beautiful mountains, the silence, the wind, the cawing of the birds, the rumble of some douche in Oakley's <laughs> with his douchey kids that he's spawned too many of riding ATVs. Yeah, have I done it? No, Do am I curious a little bit, but it doesn't matter, it is a blight, it is loud, there's no need for it. And it's definitely again, more unnecessary fossil fuels. Like yeah, I have less hate for true. laser tag, even though it's meant for you know 12 year olds. <laughs> ATVs are awful. I have never ridden an ATV. Um, I'm more curious about it than you are, I think it seems fun. Uh, also, when I worked many summers as a caterer at Fairfield University, being able to take a trip in a golf court cart across the campus was one of the most fun things as a kid. This is before I drove. Sure. So ATVs are kind of like that. Also, I've long thought that in areas like LA, they should just make road legal ATVs as extremely cheap basic transportation. I think that should be a thing. And now, what do you mean, you like on the court, like bird scooters, but ATVs? Yeah, but like that, you could actually be on the street, and it would be an ATV, so you don't have to worry about tipping over. It can have a tiny little area that you can strap down cargo, cargo, so it'd be a little bit more capable than a motorcycle. You could probably sell them for one fourth what a new car costs. They could where do you be drive right in the now. bike lane? No, on the street. Okay, it's LA. How fast are you going anyway? It's expensive to buy a car. This would, I think, free up people to yeah. be able to get to work without spending as much money, and maybe it could be electrified. Well, just a smart I car. New York future. has it, like a smart car share. Anyway, that's I think my this number would be five. Much cheaper than a smart car. Um, anyway, I'm more interested in ATVs than you are. Probably, it's probably just because I've liked, you know, James Bond my whole life, and that's the sort of thing he'd jump on and shoot somebody from. Um, mine is more general, although ATVs could perhaps be a part of this. It's Collecting things that you have no intention of using. So collecting just for the purpose of having things. So I would say rich people collecting cars that they're not gonna drive. Or that they have so many that like they drive it once in five years or whatever. So like Jay Leno, expensive watches. Having massive wine collections that you don't intend to drink. Mm -hmm. I think that having collections is fine. I have a big board game collection, 
but I play those games. That's why I have the vast majority of them. So and I wear I just, all of my clothes. Thank you very much. And you? my shoes and my jackets sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I just having a massive collection of stuff just for the purpose of having it, I think is a little bit weird. I don't know. All the Nazi memorabilia. Yeah, like you know, you want to have one place for it. Uh huh. Uh You You want to have one uh, rifle with an iron cross on it. But um, yeah, I just I don't I don't understand that. I don't understand like a massive wine collection. I don't understand it, and it annoys me. I agree with you. Good one. Okay. Uh, What's your number four? Uh, What is my number four? My number four is, and this is waning, but it's a hobby and it's um, a lifestyle, and it is uh, maybe a disease. Uh, Maybe it is. It is very much a addictive crypto trading can mm-hmm. we not can we stop just it needs to end and it is all consuming i know people who've like dated crypto dudes who like are really into it they can never stop mm-hmm. um it's like hasn't it been borne out like is this even relevant anymore for me complaining about this like aren't they all it's like crashing on there yeah i'm just like haven't they lost all their money like have you learned nothing don't do it it it's not only I don't care that you're making money. You're kind of an insufferable person who's constantly checking the stock, <laughs> like the stocks of your or whatever the value of your currency. Um, and it's incredibly volatile and a horrible investment, at least at this point. I look. I think first of all, I think it is definitely fair to put it on this list because it is a hobby. Yeah. It is. It doesn't. It shouldn't be if it was something other than what it is. It would just be an investment thing. You know, having stocks isn't a hobby necessarily. And I'm sure there are people who just have, as part of a portfolio, they have Ethereum or something. But I think you mean the people for whom, no, this is their hobby. This is what their profile picture is. This is what they tweet about. This is what their shirt is. This is what they bring up in conversation. It is a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and I imagine it's probably less prevalent than it was a few years ago. There's just been too many high profile failures. Um, and I, that said, it is still a thing. I don't think that SVB, you know, falling apart is going to get rid of all of it or whatever. But I think it is a little bit harder to do it and not um, know that everybody knows what it is, what you're doing. It's not mm-hmm. a thing that you and get how to insufferable about. you they are. know about it. Exactly, exactly. If you just want to make some money, that's fine. But like, Don't if you're really it. into board apes, that's weird. Anyway, my number four is maybe related. I think that some people probably are fans of both. And this is like, by the way, when I say I don't understand it, I'm not saying it's objectively bad. I'm saying I literally don't understand it. And this is very much in that vein. I don't understand guys, because it's almost all guys, Mm. who get really into these like totems of old school masculinity, like specifically. Whiskey and cigars, Ugh. like they get really into these are things you can consume that automatically make you more manly, like whatever. I guess Sean Connery did this 50 years ago, so you should do it. And look, there are people who like whiskey and there are people who like cigars. I think there's many more people who think that they should, and they see Andrew Tate smoking a cigar or whatever, so they do. And it's just like there's a lot of stuff you could do that might seem manly that's not gross. I don't know. It seems weird to me. I'll never understand it. Yeah, I guess there's a way to do it that feels classy, and there's a way to do it that is Andrew Tatey. Like, I've smoked Cuban cigars in Cuba though, and it was like lovely. And I was like, I guess I could get how if I was a man who didn't really have a personality, I could be more into this. It's it's, it's fairly <laughs> enjoyable, and I like whiskey. I don't really like like I, I guess I'm more of a I don't know with I have a bourbon like a lighter whiskey. I don't know, but like I could understand. It's just like when mm-hmm. that supplants your whole identity. Like Father's Day just happened, and it's like everything, every card is like a car, a whiskey, a cigar. And you're just like, this is <laughs> so corny. Like dads yeah, are and a lot I get, more. Anyway, I get yeah. wanting to sit in a fancy chair and drink. Yeah. Like, like, but I would go for like. Like do something that's authentic to you. You don't have to do whiskey just because that's what they said was cool 50 years ago. I would drink amaretto. That's because I yeah. like the taste of it. I actually like the taste of it. Right. A frangelico, maybe. Just do your version of it that's honest. Maybe you like a Cosmo. Yeah. That can be fancy. 
That can be masculine. You can you know still sit in that chair. Doing what you want. Exactly. You can have the leather chair or whatever. Anyway, what's your number three? Okay, so number three is on the tip of collection, collecting things. And for sure, I agree, things you're never gonna use. But cars for me is one of the most obnoxious, right? And and like, it, yes, there's something beautiful about classic cars. I like that, it's whatever. But like, I remember, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, who, you know, yeah, he's earned his money. He's not a billionaire, he's not a bad guy. But he's a car collector and he had his little, you know, getting coffee in cars with friends yeah. and all that stuff. He's got his like beautiful classic cars. And you're just like, you t- this is a little too much money. This is a little too excessive for my taste. It's beautiful. I'm not saying it's not beautiful. I guess it's fun. I guess it's better than most things. But it was so funny because in this one episode where he's with Sarah Silverman, he's like in some kind of Jaguar and he's like, yeah, yeah, you see this car? You see that car? You know what this car says and versus that car? And he's like pointing at some like Civic or like some other car. And he's like, and she just immediately goes like, um, that you're like an elitist douchebag. It's just so funny. Okay, I gotta see that. She's just owning him. It was very brief. Like she went along with the whole thing and it was fine and she was funny and they talked about other stuff. But it was just this moment where Jerry was like, you know, see what you are, you're this and you're this. And you're just like, cars. She literally said an elitist douchebag. (laughs) You nailed it. She did. Yeah, 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 she did. Cars are beautiful. I get that. But I think that they project far too much status symbol for this. For for what is healthy, it is so stupid to have your yeah. status be determined by cars. They're again not good for the environment, and it's like they're just your little protective little like dick shell. You know, it's like this is my, this will you know, this just makes me feel smart and strong. And it's like, does it though? Yeah, look, I I like cars, um, but they're also very expensive. Yeah. Like any car is very expensive now, so an expensive car is even more expensive. So. Yeah, like it's, I guess if you're super rich, it's a really expensive toy. Like if you like toys, well, those are the most expensive toy. toys that you can really get. But it's just so much money. And like, it's one thing to just like it. But like, if Jay, Jerry Seinfeld is like literally trying to imply that he's better because he has a nice car, like you're rich. Like, what? It's not like, like you're you have some quality or something. You just happen to be rich. Exactly. And you can look yeah. if you're an enthusiast, you can fix up other people's cars. Wouldn't that be cool? You get there's a car in my neighborhood. It's a beautiful old pickup. It could use it could use like a revamp. What if Seinfeld, what if Jerry were to like mm-hmm. go, you know, again, pimp a ride, update this car and give it back to the owner? Wouldn't that be amazing? And the caveat is I can drive it whenever I want, which would be kind of <laughs> funny. Jerry can that come by funny. and pick up your car. Like you know. He has an extra set of keys. He can just take your car. Jerry Seinfeld stole my car. That's and the show. Not, exactly. And then you know, John, they're not doing the work themselves. The rich people yeah. aren't doing the work. They're getting the no. work on their cars done for them. Hundred uh, percent. My number three. I'm gonna take a break from attacking the rich or whatever. Although sure. some rich people do do this. Um, it's gonna be the people for whom their their hobby is definitely just being a troll and shit poster. Like that's what they do. Is they just Talk shit, attack people, harass people, make purposefully shitty memes. There are memes that are funny or whatever. There are memes that are insightful. Ken Klippenstein posts them. Um, but like just purposefully trying to be ironic by posting shit that you don't mean and that doesn't mean anything to you, but that's the meaning of it. It's just you're just you're just clogging up the internet. That's all you're doing. You're making social media worse. You're making our politics worse. You're making discourse around pop culture worse. Just just stop. Like, and I don't mean people who will troll or will do a shit post. Like, I'm saying a person for whom you can look over their Twitter history and this is the person that they are. This is the thing that they do. Maybe they do it on Reddit, maybe they do it on Twitter. I just don't understand that as such a weird niche performance art yeah. for an audience of zero, basically. I don't understand it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, yeah. oh God, I couldn't even like the posting is a whole new level of hobby. But yes, the hobby of just being terminally online, Elon Musk, yeah. and cons- and like that's just what you do. And like, you you gotta touch grass. That's why people say touch grass. But like, it's not. I it's fun to talk to those people who are like, oh, I'm up on the latest drums. But you know, I'm married to one, and he sometimes needs to just like 
you know, chill out, put the phone down. He's not a shit poster, <laughs> but like, you know, could use uh-huh. a little bit more fresh air. Okay, okay, well, drag him out. You I'm know. dragging him, I'm dragging uh, him. What, what's your number two? Okay, number two, God, it's not even, I, well, number one is this is making it very difficult for number one. But number two, you know, you're at the beach, which I've established I think is overrated, but still, go to the beach. I want a beautiful day, um, sun, water, uh, the sounds of, you know, all of that. A gull pecking at a Fritos can, uh, can, a can of Fritos is a can in my scenario here, and all of a sudden you hear. <laughs> And there is someone flying an effing drone above your head. (laughs) Why? Why not? Why? Because we're here. Why? Because I'm 12 and whatever. I'm 12 and my dumbass, like 40 year old dad is like, it's cool. What are they gonna do? No. Drones (laughs) are the dumbest hobby. Now, I understand there's a whole genre of drone fighting and you do that under a bridge with other virgins, like that's fine. But like, (laughs) what are you talking about? (laughs) um, When you're at the beach or you're in a place, a park, just don't fly the drone. No drones, drone flying is so obnoxious and it implicates and involves everybody around you. I think Mm -hmm. it's a dumb hobby. I cannot say that I constantly see Drones. I don't go under the bridges that you hang out no, in. No, but don't, you've so been I don't know to that, the beach and someone's got a drone. I've been to the beach. I'm kidding. Um, I sometimes bike the beach. Uh, no, I haven't really seen it, but I do think it's it's interesting that there's such a big difference between what you can do with drones. Like drones can produce some of the most beautiful footage that exists. But then it also could just be this annoying thing that's zipping around and annoying literally everyone around. I, yeah. I do agree with that. And but like I also I kind of you. understand it. Yeah, they it could be filming you. That's true. Could be true. filming you. But but dads have always loved like remote controlled planes and remote controlled <sighs> boats. So this is just kind of a more advanced version of that. So I, and they like cameras. They've always liked cameras. So you combine those two things. It's I think the most understandable thing to take off. Once it became relatively consumer priced, it's the most predictable thing that would take off a month. Oh, dad. for sure. It's definitely a but it dad. Can be it's the yeah. most dad like thing. Like yeah, please, please any day it. smoke a cigar in my face oh my or drink God, whiskey. Than that. I would absolutely rather that but than Francesca. for you to fly a drone. It's a vehicle, it's a camera, and they can take shots of women in bikinis at the beach. Yeah, like yeah, it's a gadget. Combined. It is made for a midlife crisis man. 100%, I'll get one eventually. <laughs> uh, okay, my number two is more expensive and back on the rich. And uh, it's a sometimes consequential hobby. It is been in the news recently, by the way, several times. It's climbing Everest. I mean, honestly, you could mm. throw the submersible thing on this as well. They're very similar hobbies, but. Uh, and that's, by the way, if it wasn't clear, that's what inspired this is the submersible thing. It's climbing Everest. It is putting so much money into a thing that really relies on what other people are doing anyway. Like the Sherpas are doing so much of the actual work. And like there's a cost to it in terms of the damage that it does, but also people need to be brought down and then ignoring the people that actually save them. There's just a lot of like old school, like, British khaki hat wearing colonialism to it. I just, John Oliver did a great episode years ago on the climbing of Everest. And like, I get wanting to be able to say, like, everybody wants to be able to say, I did a thing and it's really cool and it's really hard. But like, it's not always clear when you brag about something how impressive it is. Climbing Everest, everybody knows what that is. So it's like, it's a thing you can point to that's super impressive. But it's not really what you make it out to be. And like, it's just so much better stuff you could be spending your money on. I'm not a fan. Yeah. I don't know. No. Maybe I'm I think it's ridiculous. I think it's, it's again, it's pure conquer vibes. It's pure, like, you know, weirdly, and it's not just men, but like weirdly sort of like dick measuring contest y, like I Mm -hmm. conquered Earth. I don't feel the need to conquer Earth. I don't feel the need to, you know, uh, explore every single. I feel the need to respect Earth, stand back, you know, yeah. give it space, let it do its thing. You know, we haven't we effed with it enough, and so 
there's a weird cavalierness that our entire society that is built on exploiting natural resources until we kill ourselves and the earth <laughs> that I feel like this is all kind of stems from and I just don't Maybe. I don't have the itch and I have a little bit more like of a stand back in awe no need to interfere or climb to just say I did it. Yeah. Um, but what uh, what tops your list? The top of the list, top of the list, it could be an overlap, but it's a tie. So hunting, hunting especially and maybe exclusively big game hunting is abs- is an absolute abomination. It's not a hobby, mm-hmm. you are taking out endangered species so you can mount their bus uh, in your Lodge, or you can pose with them, a la you know Eric and Donald Trump Jr. Mm-hmm. Like big game hunting. I understand deer hunting. Their deers don't really seem to be going anywhere. It makes me sad. I've seen Bambi one too many times. Aww. I would never personally hunt. I get rabbit hunting. I get all these other things. Again, I wouldn't personally do it, but it's the big game hunting for me that is. There's no excuse. It should be illegal. I mean, there's massive poaching. There's all. It's all about treasure trophies. It's all about show and tell. It's all about feeling, you know, on top again, controlling the world instead of respecting it. And I hate it. That being said, there's something that annoys me a little bit more or as what? much when it comes to hobbies. When anyone says that their hobby is travel, I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, that's cute. That's cute. Your tra- your your hobby is just it's like, oh, my hobby is going out to restaurants. Like your hobby is just being <laughs> rich." What's wrong with that? No, 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 because the hobby being travel is like, yeah, bro, if we were all, if we all had the money to go anywhere, it's not a hobby. It's just a thing that you have money to do. I just think hobby is a really weird like thing to call travel. You can say we're big on travel, we go places, we do a lot of exploring, it's fun, whatnot. But like my pastime is traveling, it's just like, ugh. Well, because for most people, you'd be like, I went on a vacation because yes. it's rare, it stands yes. out. But for it to yes. be a hobby, it has to be fairly constant. Yes. So you're saying I do the thing that other people look forward to for years. That's just the thing I do constantly. Absolutely, yeah. that annoys me. I used to know it a really person, does. I'm not gonna name names, but I knew, I knew a person who multiple times a year took nicer vacations. Then at least up until that point in my life, I had ever taken in my life. I, I got engaged on a trip to Hawaii. It's the nicest vacation I've ever been on. They, since they were young, multiple times a year did hobby, did hobbies, vacations at least as nice as that. Well, routinely. Yeah. And that is yeah. such a weird thing. Yeah, going out to restaurants, it doesn't even have to be a fancy restaurant. That doesn't bother me as much. Although I almost put fine dining as a hobby as No, no, no. It, it, I'm not talking about like going to like the Thai food restaurant or like the Tex Mex place. Like I'm talking about fine dining. I'm talking about sure. like just like that is for me also, yeah, I just. I agree. It almost made my list. But when you said a crossover, were you saying the big game hunting is like. Everest, I feel like maybe like that. no. I feel like maybe you might have that as your number one, but I don't know, John. Well, maybe you know me pretty well because that is my number <laughs> one. It is. I have rich guy hunting down. It's my number one. The worst. Because the other ones, like some of these, I don't understand. I'm not that peeved about. Like if you want to collect watches, that doesn't particularly bother me. I actually have a cheap watch collection and <laughs> I don't know why I do because I used to wear them all the time, but then the pandemic happened and we never go anywhere or whatever. But so that doesn't really bother me. You do the whiskey and cigars, it doesn't bother me as long as you don't breathe it in my face. Uh, being a troll kind of bothers me. Uh, climbing Everest is weird and it seems like a waste of money and they sometimes denigrate the certain Sherpas. But, but it's the rich guy hunting that's like actively harming things like you for you to have fun, you have to shoot an elephant in the head. Yep. Or you have to murder a lion. Yep. Or whatever, kill a rhino, kill a bear. Like it seems pose weird that something has cheetah. to die. Yeah, pose with a dead cheetah. Like, because it's this weird thing where it's like you're traveling to a faraway place. 
you're interacting with nature. All of this stuff that seems to strongly signal that you're more into what Earth has to offer than anyone else. But your interest is that you want to kill it. Yeah, That seems weird. Like you want to photograph a lion by going on safari, that's cool. You want to get a photo with a lion, that's badass. But you want to have locals like stake down a lion so you can blow its brains out. That just seems so weird to me. And I yeah. understand they sometimes it's they raise money for preserves or blah, 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 whatever. I don't even care about that. It's just so weird that that's like, it's that super lizard brain need to master things. And I'm not saying all hunting. I understand that sometimes there's way too many deer and they're literally wiping out like an area. So you call them. I, I get hunting in some cases, but just like I want to murder a giraffe or something. Yeah. It just seems so weird to me that that's still a thing. Anyway, so we did Agreed. cross over. Uh, yeah, no, it's it should be illegal and and sadly it is not for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, obviously the economic poverty of countries where you do that kind of thing makes it pretty easy to go do, which is really sad. And people again, People should be paid to protect animals and nature and not actually exploit it for the entertainment of Eric Trump. Yeah, specifically for them. I just want it to be illegal for them, honestly. Just for him. I don't care about for most. Anyway, I wonder if we've ever had a crossover number one before. We I'm have. Not sure if we have. We have. Yeah, number one. Okay. Well, uh, our brains were in sync uh, this particular time. We'll yeah, see yeah. if it happens again. But uh, Francesca, thank you for giving us your time as always. Everyone thank you, check John. out the Situation Room on Tuesdays. Let's, let's go ATVing let's someday and let's hate go every minute ATV of it. ATV up the side of Everest, shooting bald eagles as we travel. Yes. Uh, and smoke I a cigar. I hate the damage report. Ah. <laughs> And if we see Sarah Silverman, we'll make fun of her and say that she's the civic of women. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you everybody for supporting us and making this bonus content possible. I hope you're enjoying it. We'll see you next time. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is. So you don't miss anything.